Welcome to the Enterprise Excellence Podcast, where our purpose is to help create a better future. Learn from our world's experts how to improve your organization sustainably. Learn how to achieve and sustain an excellence journey for yourself, others, and the planet. And I'm your host, Brad Jevons, coming to you from Brisbane, Australia. We are proudly brought to you in association with SA Partners, a world-leading business transformation consultancy. SA Partners are a truly purposeful company focused on helping organisations achieve sustainable improvement for themselves, others, and the planet. Welcome to episode 115 of the Enterprise Excellence Podcast. It is such a pleasure to have Deandra Wardell back on the show with us today. Deandra recorded an amazing episode with us back in season one, episode 14. Deandra is passionate about developing a world of problem solvers, focusing on many of our most pressing challenges. Today, we'll explore how to embrace disruption, which is a the theme of this year's American Manufacturing Excellence Conference, which Deandra will be speaking at as part of a keynote panel. Let's get into the episode. Deandra, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, Brad, thank you for having me back. I, I always look forward to talking to you and learning about what you have going on. So we always have great conversations. So thank you for having me. Yeah, and I've been so enjoying Deandra, you know, through social media. Um, I can follow what you've been doing and it's been massive like i i just see the activity and the things you're doing to make a difference but do you mind sharing for our listeners what you have been up with, up to over the last two years since we we last spoke sure so um i have been to summarize it i've been living the dream and what i mean by that is my dream and the dream of of the team at onto the next one consulting is that we want to come alongside and work with individuals work with groups to help them to achieve whatever big, bold, audacious dream they're pursuing. And um, especially from the standpoint of increasing engagement within organizations, having an impact on the community, solving problems, operationalizing diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, so that there's that sense of belonging um, within organizations. And that includes you know, corporations, as well as not-for-profits and and those who are doing work in the community um, to impact, you know, members of the community that they serve. So that has consisted of, um, you know, we continue to do, you know, write blogs to heighten awareness and share information. And then not only that, you know, again, working alongside clients and, and, and helping them to accomplish their goals using, you know, continuous improvement, uh, particularly the Toyota Kata, um, and also, like I said, working to increase that engagement and increase that sense of belonging among their team members. Yeah, Deandra, it's it's such a pertinent time. It's like the, you know, it's like the perfect timing of you branching out and saying to do what you've done because, you know, I know you're an expert in the Kata and such a background in lean and strategy deployment and everything that goes with it to actually make it stick. But that focus you've got on the big issues like diversity and mm-hmm. everything that goes with that, it's such a need right now is help with those transformations and and the results that companies are getting are off the charts too. I've been involved with BHP. Man, the results they're getting by bringing that diversity into their business is amazing mm-hmm. just because of the disruption of bias and a lot of all the other benefits. Like, Do you mind describing some of the benefits that you see with clients as you you know, work with them to bring continuous improvement in, but also diversity? Sure. You know, one of the biggest benefits that I've observed is that the shift in the mindset and, um, you know, just the overall recognizing the value of every individual. And there is a lot of focus. I think there's a lot of attention on diversity. Uh, We want to have people on our teams who are different, look different, have different schools of thought. But once that diversity is represented, my question is, then what? It's one thing to be invited to the table, but will it be acceptable for me to get up and go get a soft drink in the refrigerator? You know, can I, um, you know, be as comfortable as I want? Can I put my elbows on the table? And I know that's a far off analogy. But it's one thing to have a seat at the table, but it's another thing to feel like 
you actually belong. Mm -hmm. And so what we're discovering, um, especially, you know, post pandemic, if we're, if we're exactly post pandemic yet, The way in which we interact with one another, and especially where so many organizations have been working in a hybrid space, what we're finding is is that a bit of a connection has been lost in terms of how we communicate, how we interact. And, you know, thank goodness for technology. We have Zoom, we have Microsoft Teams, but nothing compares to that human connection. And so with the absence of that, what, what we're finding is that people are allowing fear to take up too much space, fear of saying the wrong thing, fear making assumptions and jumping to conclusions with what they think about people and how people are interacting in the workplace and even how processes operate. So the advantage of the work that we're doing is everything starts at looking at the purpose and the mission. Why is the organization in business? What what is what is the goal? What is the outcome of the product or service that they're offering? And ensuring that everyone is clear on what that long term vision is, and then beginning to look at well, what are the other, you know, outcomes and goals associated with that vision, and providing opportunities. You know, every company is experiencing some type of challenge in a metric they're trying to meet or something they're trying to accomplish. And when organizations begin to understand that it's important to create channels where everyone on the team can offer suggestions, have the opportunity to make improvements. And that's where continuous improvement comes into play. That scientific thinking, practicing the kata, lean, lean six sigma, agile, is having this approach and this way of doing that involves everyone. And once a person feels like they can contribute, they are a part. They're not just someone who's coming in to check a box every day and make a widget and go home, but they're truly valued for, you know, for their, for their skills and what they have to bring. Well, then that's when you begin to recognize each individual and the humanity in each individual. And you want to ensure that they're included and you want to ensure that they belong and feel like they belong. And then that's when you begin to see that turn. And so in, in organizations that I've been working with recently, we, we start out, yes, we look at the strategic plan, but then we, where can we start out to have some success in a small way? And it may be evaluating the end-to-end employee life cycle experience. What does hiring look like? Uh, Then once a person is hired, how are they onboarded? What does orientation look like? And then what are the policies and procedures that are connected to the practices? Because that helps with the stickiness and Mm -hmm. making sure that we don't just do something right now. It's not just the cool thing to do this month and then it disappears, but we're making those improvements and we're continuing to build upon it and ensuring that everyone, you know, not just only leadership or engineering or HR, But everyone in the organization sees where they belong and where they can contribute to the process. Jondra, that's so, that's brilliant. You know, how you've really described the critical systems and some of the approaches within an organization Mm -hmm. to bring out each individual, to enable each individual in these small teams to bring themselves to it, be themselves. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. powerful. That's powerful. Well, because it's one thing you'll hear the saying, bring your whole self to work. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that really mean? And what happens when someone brings their whole self to work? Part of bringing their whole self to work may, they may have questions or concerns or may not necessarily agree with what has been you know, identified as the priorities. And it doesn't mean that they're condescending or that they're being counterproductive and they don't want to contribute. There is a diversity in thought that warrants exploration. And if that person is allowed to share and, and the creative brainstorming can take place among the group, there's so many good things. There's so much value that can come out of it versus, um, no, thanks, but no thanks. Go back to work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny, isn't it? Like that I hear the two key elements there is, does the organization have the system, the leadership behaviors to allow people to connect to the vision and those goals and set their own in that way? But then does is there a system for that person to bring themselves to that meeting or whatever it may be, those mm-hmm. Carter routines? 
that allows them to actually, you know, bring themselves, bring their ideas yeah. and create continuous improvement and innovation. Yeah. And, and it goes back to those systems. And as a result of having those systems in place, that's where you see the evolution of culture. And that's where you begin to see things being done differently. Um, and I mentioned the importance of ensuring that the work we do to, you know, to foster the sense of belonging and inclusion, to create space, to be intentional about creating spaces for psychological safety, um, to really ensure that the scientific thinking approach is embedded in how we do work. Well, it ties back to what do our documents say? What do our operating procedures say? What's listed in our handbook? Um, because, and then how does that tie into the daily practice? Because the ultimate goal, this mindset and this shift, we want it to turn into action. And that happens when it's something that we that everyone has awareness about. Everyone is, is speaking the same message. We're aware of the direction we're moving towards. And it's something that everyone is consistently practicing. And, and we, we each may have our own flavor or, you know, adaptations we may put on it. But at the heart of it, we all are in agreement that this is how it is that we submit ideas. This is the process to evaluate those ideas. You know, let's look at these ideas, how they're aligned with the overall strategic plan. And, and having those types of, um, again, like you said, systems and structure in place, that helps companies to begin to elevate that culture. And like I said, to develop opportunities for team members to share and feel like they belong and that they can contribute. Yeah. It, the right systems can bring an organization wings, can't it? It's absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing. Like so, it. Which links to the topic of today, which is such an important one over when we reflect on the last three years since you and I last spoke on the podcast, Deandra, mm -hmm. which is embracing disruption. Boy, haven't we had some disruption and it continues, yeah. doesn't it? It's not like it's it slowing down, but Deandra, you know, disruption's tough. You know, we naturally want stability in life. And mm -hmm. do you mind sharing a, a bit about what you've seen with disruption and what you're doing with disruption right now? Like what, what, and what can people do and organizations do? Sure. So, you know, um, this theme of embrace disruption ties into the theme for this, um, the AME Association of Manufacturing Excellence Conference that will be hosted in October in Dallas. And um, in, in, in the way that, that AME is describing this conference is that, you know, we're looking at what lies ahead for business. Um, that's manufacturing, that's healthcare providers, it's the public sector, just all aspects of business. And re-examining and evaluating processes and people. And in the light of what we experience from the pandemic, you know, now more than ever, people have an understanding on what happens when there is a disruption. You have to make a choice. You have to pivot and decide that you need to move forward. And, you know, part of embracing disruption is realizing there are things that we've learned and experienced in the past, but we can't hang on to the past. Um, it's good to take a glance back to remember how far we've come and what we've learned. And that's part of the reflection, but it's so important to focus on where is it that we're going and how can we be innovative? Um, how is it that we can involve voices that we have not historically heard from in developing these plans to, div um, to get to a more inclusive, creative, holistic approach in terms of how we do business. And, you know, it's important for everyone to begin to adopt this mindset of embracing disruption is not a bad thing. I think, you know, as it's human nature, we're reluctant to change. We get comfortable with the status quo and how things are. But what we find is on the other side of what's unknown or where we don't have experience or, or things that we need to learn, that's where the excitement comes in. You know, I've, I've, I've heard leaders use the analogy, you know, we want to go out into deep waters and, and experience new and challenging things. We don't want to stay on the shore. 
being only familiar with what we know. And that can be scary, uh, which is why it's so important that, you know, we really do have a good big picture understanding of ultimately where we're trying to go and being clear and communicating that path and moving forward. And then, you know, like I said, change is hard, but if you're involved in a process and you're working collaboratively with a team, you know that you're not by yourself. That also helps to eliminate and reduce some of that fear around change. Mm, that's cool. Like really, you're under those two key things you said there on, at the end there, which is you got to have that big picture and then mm -hmm. the team collaboration of the team can help with change. Because I was going to ask you a question. I, I recently watched a video with Mike Rother on Carter 5 and Mike was just showed, got people to cross their arms the opposite way, you know, yes. cross your arms the normal way, cross them the opposite way. And boy, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Like, no. it is awkward. But the one of the key things you're saying, DeAndre, that can really help an organization embrace change is have that big picture and communicate it well, and then create that team collaboration, I guess. And I guess you're talking at all parts of the organization. Do you mind, DeAndre, if we start with the big picture? What have you seen work really effective within an organization or with a leader creating that big picture and, and it actually being something that people connect to and start sure. to believe in? Sure. So as a follow on to your example about Mike Rother using that um, crossing his arms example, you know, if you, if you cross your arms just naturally without thinking about it, you have a set way. One, you know, right hand may go over the left arm, left hand may go under the right arm, and that's just a habit. But when someone tells you to cross it different, that's something unknown and it feels awkward. You've been doing it this way for so long. But having that clarity in that we're working towards crossing our arms in the opposite direction. But the other thing too is explaining the why behind that. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna segue and talk about that for organizations. Um, leaders will have a vision you know, there's disruption, there's whatever that's taking place uh, within that particular industry where there may be a need to change. And being able to communicate that big picture change succinctly to teams and not only saying, well, this is what we're working towards, but it's important to understand the why behind it so people can get connected to the purpose. And then realizing that we've been crossing our arms one certain way all these years now it's time to work on crossing them in a different way to, to accomplish this new purpose, realizing that's not going to happen overnight. Mm. So yes, get the big picture, but then what's important after that is breaking it down. What are the micro steps we can take? What are things that we can practice daily to build those habits to work closer to where we need to be? So instead of focus on totally crossing your arms the opposite way, let's regularly practice where will the new where will the hand be positioned in the new place? And the second hand may not be in the right place. That's fine. Let's build a habit on getting that, you know, the hand that's going to be on top in the right place. And I know this is kind of a weird analogy, but um, so in working with organizations, what we find is when that big picture is clarified and then looking at where we are right now. And not assigning any judgment to, oh, my goodness, we should be further along. Why aren't we at X yet? That's not what's important. What's important is recognizing where we are. And then what is the next small step? What is the next target of where it is we aspire to be? And what will be the steps that we need to take to get us there? And a part of evaluating that is looking at what's in the way and figuring out what we need to do to overcome it. And with each of those steps, we're running an experiment and we're reflecting on what we're learning and that's guiding us to the next step. And then ultimately, that big picture that was a dream will be a reality and something we have hanging on our walls. And, you know, what I just described, I pretty much walked through the steps of the kata. Yeah. That's what the kata is about. You know, leaders having that challenge, sharing that direction, sharing that big picture and then collaborating with teams um, by following the a system of scientific thinking of methodically, scientifically, one small step at a time, 
working towards whatever that aspirational goal is. So it's important that there's that vision. Um, it's that interaction. It's that team support. It's the coaching. It's the mentoring. And then reflecting on what's learned. And when things go as expected, great. When they don't go as expected, great. Because you have something to learn and something new to to experiment and try. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and listeners to DeAndre and I, before we came on air, we're talking about the similarities between Toyota Carter, agile thinking, and even theory of constraints to a, mm-hmm. you know, common degree. And it's like, it's really that like, I'm hearing that how do you eat an elephant type of thing? You got to know that exactly. elephant. There's got to be a reason why you want to eat the thing. It's got to exactly. be meaningful. <laughs> Otherwise you're not going to do it. And then what's the first spoon and what challenges are we going to face in that, mm-hmm. with that first spoon? And, and the thing about it is that's what makes the work that we do um, with the Kata and Agile, and I'll just say continuous improvement in general. Yeah. What makes it so purposeful, powerful, and impactful is that change is hard. No question about it. Change is hard for all of us, even as someone who does this work. Um I recently had a meeting with my team where we took our company through the strategic visioning process um, because, you know, there's always these iterations of what's next. What do we need to be focused on? What do we need to do to to better serve our clients? And and with that, things that have historically worked, we don't want to just throw them out. But it's so important to recognize that from the practice, from interacting, from following this scientific way of thinking and breaking something down, breaking it down into something that feels manageable, it really helps us to embrace change and to embrace that disruption because we don't get overwhelmed thinking, oh my goodness, I have to eat the elephant all in one bite. But I first need to focus on the why of eating it and even you know, the method, am I going to use a spoon? Am I going to use a fork or what have you? And, and breaking it down that way, determining what needs to be done at each step. It's, it, it makes, you know, managing change, um, easier to embrace. Mm. Yeah. It's not so dramatic, is it? No, it's it's not as dramatic. And again, you know, you're in a space where, you know, you're not alone and, you know, you can rely on the strengths of others. Um, you know, like I had shared, I, the team and I just went through this strategic visioning experience internally. And, you know, even as the leader of the company, I, I realized that I don't have all the ideas. I have the vision, but it is so powerful when I share that vision and all the details of, of the operations of the business down to the finances and, and all those details that helps the team to feel more involved and show that they belong. And the ideas that come forth are just powerful. And so more and more, you know, it is our goal to help other organizations to have that type of experience where you're not overwhelmed um, and stressed out by change, but using these different scientific approaches and these ways of thinking and doing uh, to manage that change and and to to have that assurance of this can be done. Mm. whatever that this may be (laughs) what a great episode remember you can visit our youtube channel enterprise excellence podcast to access a two-minute tip to help explain some of the connections and enablers between toyota carter agile and theory of constraints we'll put a link in the show notes below please like subscribe and share this podcast to help others gain insights and create a better future Let's get back to the episode. And then Deandre, I can see that by building that that Carter culture within an organization that you're going to be able to adapt. You know, you're going to create that uh, ability to continuously improve, that agility Mm -hmm. to move and adapt with um, change that comes through and disruption. Deandre, Mm -hmm. one question I've got is that um, I see in a lot of organizations you might get the executive or the, the the most senior people where they'll form that vision and come up with the why and they'll mm-hmm. form a strategic plan, but it gets stuck there. You know, like it's like it, it doesn't get down into the organization and mm-hmm. you don't end up with these small teams of everyone improving every day. What's some of the key steps that 
an organization or one that you've seen do it really well where they've been able to take that thing that's sitting up top and really help to get it into every small team and get every small team improving and going forward. Yeah. So, you know, just like you said, it begins with gaining clarity on what that vision is, what the overarching goal is, but it does not stop there. Sometimes it does. A strategic plan becomes an artifact that ends yeah. up sitting in someone's um, on, on someone's shared drive or, um, you know, is in a binder on someone's bookshelf collecting dust. Mm -hmm. But to bring it to life, what has been identified as the strategic goals must be cascaded throughout the organization. It, it, you, you must have that alignment. And so, you know, where I have found success personally uh, throughout my career and then in, in working with clients now is taking that strategic plan and ensure it aligns to everyone in the organization, including the most recent new hire. What's in that strategic plan should show up and what the performance review goals are. Um, everyone should be aware of the direction that we're rolling in. And so, you know, of course, those goals may look different or those objectives may look different on different levels because it's the overall organizational goal. Uh, then it may be a division, then a department then among a team, and then an individual. And it's so important to have that catch ball and that back and forth process between each level of leadership to ensure that the message is clear. The other part of that is not only strategic planning, but strategic communication. Because those who are involved in the strategic plan, they, they were there in the room, they were brainstorming, having those ideas. But what about for those people who weren't? And ensuring that that message is communicated in a way that makes sense and supports that buy-in. And then the other part is, you know, of course, there are milestones. There may be, um, you know, a three to five year plan or a one year plan. But breaking it down further, what are the targets and milestones that we're working towards in the next two weeks, the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, what have you. And having those check-in points and having those metrics that determine are we getting closer to what it is that we're wanting to achieve? Are we moving away from it? And the other part of that communication as we as we regularly revisit where we are along the journey, ensuring that everyone is clear about how close we are or how far we are away, because that helps us to focus on our work. Um, you know, as projects are being assigned or new requests are being assigned, what we can do is say, okay, let me look at this task align with what our strategic plan is. Does this align or is this something off topic or is this something that need to be, needs to be tabled? And with that, then everyone is clear about what it is they should be doing every day, almost hourly, that rolls up into the big plan. And so where I have observed where there's a miss is the strategic plan is developed and it may be well thought out, maybe well spelled out, but it's not actualized be in the fact that it's not cascaded throughout the organization. And it's not something that's regularly evaluated. Um, it has to yeah. be more than once a year or once every few years. It really needs to tie into the daily work. Yeah, that's neat. DeAndre says two parts of that system, you've got to sweat. There's a part to, do you have a way to cascade it and do it in a really effective way to help everyone align in their own way? Like you said, it could be different, mm -hmm. different, but aligned. And then mm -hmm. the other part is a review system that mm -hmm. are we on track? Are we working on the right things? Do you wonder one thing I've seen too as organizations without that review system is that people can end up with so many things they're trying to work on yes. and overcook themselves. Is that something that you see through your journey also? Oh my goodness, yes, because we're so passionate and especially I've noticed this in working with non non for profits people in those spaces are so passionate about the work yeah. because they realize the impact it has on the communities in which they serve. So there may be, you know, 20 projects that they're working on in one day, but how effective can we be when we're multitasking to that level? Mm -hmm. And so that's another reason why the work of the strategic plan um, includes identifying what are the priorities 
and what makes sense within what time frame, so that we know what to focus on. Um, you know, if you, if you, I'm not sure if you're a gardener, yeah. but in, in thinking about when you're watering your plants, um, when the nozzle is turned to where it's an even spray, all the plants get watered. But when that spray is concentrated, where it's more, more focused, it can be so powerful that it can uproot a plant. Mm. Not that we want to do that, but for the sake of explaining this example is the more focused we are, the more we can narrow those priorities, that's where we can have the impact. And so um, that's another thing that, you know, that I typically encourage is what are the top three or five priorities? And what is the time frame? You know, where is it that we want to, we, where is it we see ourselves by the end of 90 days? And let's start working towards that. Mm. Um, and, you know, and keeping in mind the, these other parties are still important. We're not going to ignore them, but, you know, we need to be smart about the approach we take and in, in executing and ensuring that we're, we're getting what's most important right now yeah. addressed and getting it taken care of. You know, we're trying to be focused on the right spoons to eat and then yes. continuously working on them in small ways to move towards that short term. So, so that, that review that review system, you know, that just sounds critical, DeAndre, like mm-hmm. that's really brought that to life for me. Thanks for that. I'm sure our listeners will gain a lot. DeAndre, the the small team piece, like we've we've spoken a lot about our diversity and inclusion and creating this environment where every person can bring themselves and, you know, their uniqueness, but then improve. What What's important, would you say, around then creating that environment and that small team to enable them to move forward step by step in this Carter type way? So, you know, what's important, especially from a Carter perspective, there is a saying among the Carter community, don't be so certain. It's really important to not jump to conclusions and to go and explore mm-hmm. and for look and look for opportunities to learn. And I like that expression for the work with diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, because we can jump to conclusions and make assumptions about people that are not true. And we can paint a broad brush over a particular group of people that may be uninformed and poor information. And so within teams, recognizing the uniqueness that's in every individual and taking the time and getting to know that person and getting to know what they can contribute to the team um, and, 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 and being intentional about involving the voice, the ideas and the contribution, you know, that's at, that's at the heart of what this work is about creating spaces to where everyone has the opportunity to be successful, regardless of, fill in the blank, that everyone is set up to be successful, that everyone has the tools that they need um, to thrive and come to work and, and, and bring their best selves. Because it's, you know, when it's talk, when we hear this expression of bring yourself to work, what does that mean? And what that means is there is nothing inhibiting a person from being all that they can be in the position that they have. And there's nothing impeding or holding a person back from, you know, advancing their career. And wherever there are those blocks, then that's where we look at processes and systems and we need to undo them. Um, And so that can that can show in a number of different ways as we look at, you know, ensuring that there's diversity and representation from different groups in leadership and in all different positions throughout the organization ensuring that there's equity and equity and and practices and procedures that one particular group does not benefit because of fill in the blank, where another group who has historically been ignored is further harmed because of where this procedure is in place. And then ensuring that there is inclusion, you know, again, that analogy of talking about everyone has a seat at the table, really being intentional when we're in meetings, looking around on the virtual screen or in the physical room, who is not represented that should be? And what are we doing to make sure that particular group is represented? And then the accessibility piece, and, and that can take on a number of forms um, in terms of mobility, uh, the things that we do see and the things that we don't see. 
don't be so certain about what we think someone's accessibility needs may be. Um, creating an environment where if someone has an accessibility challenge, that they can bring that forward and the organization is invested in ensuring that a person can access whatever it is that they may need. Again, fill in the blank. So, you know, it's, it's a different approach to where it's focusing on the individual. And that may sound like a lot of work, but really it isn't. Because in our businesses, you know, one of our goals is not only to deliver and satisfy the external customer, but we also have that internal customer that we must think about. Yeah. And that's our team and our employees. And that's something I have always been so passionate about. Um, I put extra makeup on so I wouldn't cry. <laughs> but I, you know, the voice of the employee is so important. And one of the ways to understand and evaluate what that voice is, is recognizing the uniqueness of every individual, ensuring that everyone is in a, a safe space to where they can contribute, to where they can be successful, and then where they can thrive. Yeah, too true, too true. You know, I love that. I love that statement you made about the internal customer and looking at the employee as that internal customer. And I've seen it go the wrong way to myself early on in a journey of, you know, creating continuous improvement because like you said, just accessibility, you know, having a, mm -hmm. a ramp in the right location or mm -hmm. the toilets just being cleaned, mm -hmm. you know, and or the kitchens are diabolical and we just mm -hmm. need to be able to have a space to relax in and actually, sure. you know, have our break. But I see a lot of companies where they see these initial things as, oh, that's going to cost a lot of money. Oh, that's painful. And a no comes back. And mm -hmm. it can just destroy right out of the gate anything that's mm -hmm. trying to be achieved. But these low-hanging fruit, they're the opportunities to unlock, aren't they? You know They are. And, and, and that's where continuous improvement can be introduced to unlock them. Mm. Because we there's an assumption, oh, it's going to cost. But what people don't realize, it's going to cost either way it goes. It's going to cost in turnover. It's going to cost an engagement where an employee feels like that they don't belong. So they're going to come in, they're going to do their work, but then they're also going to look for another job or go off on their own. Yeah. Um, so there is a cost one way or another, but what's important to look at is, you know, a lot of these things, you know, some people say, well, diversity, equity, inclusion makes business sense. No, it's, it, it just makes sense, period. Yeah. Because we need to recognize and respect and appreciate and celebrate the humanity in everyone. And, um, you know, so, so part of this work is ensuring, you know, that people have what they need to be successful. And, you know, study upon study shows that, you know, when companies are focused on taking care of the employees and from that standpoint and ensuring that inclusion is, is valued, um, you see that on the productivity and the efficiency. And not only that, customers are, are becoming more intentional about who they decide to do business with based on what does that inclusion culture look like? What does belonging in this look like? Customers are making the determination that if uh, an organization just has a statement on their website, but there's no evidence or uh, that that statement is practiced and in reality, they won't invest their dollars there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, doing these type things for the sake of, you know, embracing disruption is just the right thing to do. And, um, you know, the golden rule, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. No, the higher rule is do unto others as they expect they want and need to be treated. And when you have that type of environment, um, just the productivity, and I'm, I'm not just saying that in theory, I'm not just saying that from articles that I've read, this is from firsthand observations of organizations and companies that I've worked with when they made the shift. And, and it's not really huge changes that they've made, even in evaluating their recruiting practices. And, um, you know, looking what they can do to engage teams on, on projects, you see that shift, you see that, that, that spike of energy and excitement um, where you can tell that, you know, people like, you know what, I am valued. Someone mm -hmm. 
They want to hear what I say. I had a good idea. Yay. Let me come up with a few more ideas. And it's really making an impact. Yeah, it's neat. It's neat. I also, I guess too, DeAndre, you know, some of these initial ones that come up, you know, they're things that people have had pain from for so long, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have. Unlock that and then it just flows. It's brilliant. DeAndre, what would be your enterprise excellence two-minute tip in this field we're talking about of embracing, you know, disruption and and creating this, you know, Carter culture where improvement's happening towards a longer-term goals and visions at all levels? Two minutes. Hmm. That's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one. You know, you know, just going back to the thought of embracing disruption, um, don't give in to our fears. And, and don't get set in being comfortable. Uh, don't be overwhelmed by the unknown. Be curious. Don't be so certain. And, and look at whatever it is you're working towards as a journey. It is a journey that you're not traveling alone on. You want to bring others in and collaborate and be a part of that journey. And together, explore, learn more about people as you're looking to improve processes And then don't allow yourself, I know I'm saying a lot of don'ts here, but to be overwhelmed by, oh my goodness, we must reach perfection. Mm. Um, You know, oftentimes in in working towards change and especially working towards change as it relates to um, embracing cultural disruption or, or changes from the status quo, the smallest change that we can make as we reflect on and see where we've come from and then how can we build on that and continue to, to make additional changes that in and of itself will help to dissipate some of those concerns and fears we have about whatever it is we find ourselves up against. So, you know, in closing, um, take the time to learn more about one another, take the time to learn about the process, envision an ideal state, of, of how it is that we can interact as team members as we're working towards the ideal state of what we want to accomplish in our organization. Take time for reflection, to look at what we've learned along the way, and just continuously work towards taking one step after another on that journey and keep moving on to the next one. Yeah, that's neat. That's neat. Thanks, Deandra. Deandra, yeah. what's been a recent insight and learning for you? What's been a recent aha moment? Oh, goodness, there have been so many. Um, you know, I I would say a recent aha moment. Again, it, 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 it relates back to working with my own team um, and, and practicing what we preach and um, just being really transparent in the share of information Um, even if that information may be something that's not exciting and it may be a little scary, that when we're reviewing this data together, just the ideas that can come forth that everything, you know, although we as leaders are expected to guide and give direction, it's okay for us to not always have the answers. And, And that is the power of being collaborative and engaging our team members because um, some of the best ideas that onto the next one consulting has recently had has come from the members of the team. And, um, you know, because they see the vision, they're excited about it. Um, they see how they connect to it. And because of that, so many great ideas can come from it. So, you know, it, like I said, it's one thing to read about it. It's one thing to talk about it and working with other organizations is something else where, you know, to have experienced it for myself as a business owner. Yeah, I can relate to that, DeAndra. Yeah. I, I, I can say the same. That's an insight for me, I'd say, every month or two. <laughs> it's, yeah. um, well, DeAndra, how, how can people reach out to you or onto the next one to connect, to learn more, to, to reach out to you to get some help? Sure. The best way to, to connect is through the website, and that's, my first name and my last name.com. So it's DeandraWardell.com. And by visiting the site, people are able to learn more about the different services that we offer. Um, we have videos and uh, blogs and other information to share. Um, there's information as well about the hashtag root cause racism movement. 
how we're incorporating continuous improvement to undo systemic racism. And then not only that, there is a way, um, you know, to connect. If, if there is a meeting, if someone needs help, their organization needs help, and they want to do a discovery call, they can book a call with us. And then not only that, they can connect to us through all of our social media channels by visiting the website. And then not only that, you know, by visiting the website, uh, keeps you up to date on what we're doing next, speaking engagements, projects, information that we have to share. So by visiting the website, that's the short answer. Yeah, that's great, Deandra. I, and I can vouch for that. Like I, the content and the value of the work that you do, I find amazing. So I'm, I'm a you, constant reader and um, connector on that side of things. Deandra, thank you so much for everything you have done and will continue to do with your team to create a better future. And thanks for sharing knowledge and helping us today. Thank you. And thank you for the great work you're doing with enterprise excellence that I'll, um, you know, that you provide this platform for others to share about what we're doing. And that gives an opportunity to spread the message and have best practice sharing throughout the different, um, you know, the industries and businesses and processes that we're working on. Thanks, Deandra. Really appreciate it. What a great episode. Remember, you can visit our YouTube channel, Enterprise Excellence Podcast, to access a two-minute tip to help explain some of the connections and enablers between Toyota Carter, Agile, and Theory of Constraints. We'll put a link in the show notes below. Please like, subscribe, and share this podcast to help others gain insights and create a better future. There were two key takeaways for me from this episode. Firstly, the big picture and helping everyone connect to the big picture. Every organization has and will continue to navigate disruption into the future. Things only seem to be getting faster and more difficult in this area. Being able to connect every heart and mind in the organization towards a meaningful vision is such an important system to enable this. Cascading strategy is a simple yet not easy process. It is simple in concept. Share the top line meaningful vision and plan, allow for feedback and make some adaption and changes based on the feedback. Then help each team below form their aligned meaningful vision and goals, their plan. You can then take this all the way down to the individual. Simple. The piece that makes it not easy is the habit change element required within senior leadership and middle management. Again, using the Toyota Carter approach can help with this. What is your meaningful vision and goals of excellence with this system of strategy deployment? Where are you at now and what can you do to move forward towards this? What's the first step you can take to make it better compared to what you previously do? The second key takeaway for me was small teams inclusively drawing out knowledge and energy of everyone to improve towards their aligned big picture or meaningful vision for the future, one small step at a time. Again, this is a simple approach, but it's not easy. I find starting with senior leadership is the ultimate. Helping them form a tight, inclusive team, a strategically aligned visual management system, and continuous improvement meeting is a great place to start. This helps these senior leaders form habits in Toyota Kata, or Agile, or whatever approach you're taking, to become more comfortable. They are then ready to coach the Kata, or Agile, or the other systems, with their teams, and the cascade can flow from there, and the cultural gains and shifts that all happen from this. Thanks again for your time and knowledge, Deandra. Thanks for helping us create a better future. Bye for now.